What's good, people? It's about that time to randomly relate, reverse rats, no hate. So I'm going to continue with this part two to, you know, the, the first video that I did on this subject here. Or the, well, these multiple subjects. So, again, I finished out the last video talking about Roy. Roy Jones fighting the fan. And people not bashing. You know what? Roy did get criticism for that. But, um... <clears throat> You know, Roy Jones was at the end of his career and just, you know, looking for things to do to, to make money, to stay relevant to or whatever else he had in his mind that he was doing. Um, also, let me touch on something, too, because um, the video that I did about, you know, um, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Pacquiao, you know, and I love the responses that I got to that video as well. And one of the things I want to touch on, too, OK, because hypocrisy comes from different people even sometimes fighters that we like okay but i'm gonna call a spade a spade i'm not gonna you know sugarcoat what i say and dance on the eggshells i'm gonna get right to the point ain't no goddamn filter with me roy jones okay was and i, and I pointed this out but i'm gonna reiterate okay and further the point then to make to make it understand you know make it clear what i'm saying roy jones doesn't have to like errol spence and I'm not saying he does or doesn't, but he always has, a, a, he always shoots Errol Spence down every chance he gets. My thing is, okay, I don't take any of this stuff personal. So I'm not going to, you know, get mad at a guy because he he doesn't want to fight somebody. I'll get uninterested in what he has to say because you're clearly the reason that the fight is not happening. It's not solely it's not solely an Errol Spence thing. You got to look at Bob Arum as well, okay? But at the same time, Errol Spence, no. No, he, he he doesn't want that fight. I don't think he's scared of Terrence Crawford. I think he wants to do follow out what his plans is because he knows Terrence Crawford can interrupt his plans and, and possibly beat him. Uh, he knows that. So let me do this. Why do you think he said? Why not they take the easy route and fight Sean Poole, why do you think he said it openly? Why do you think he said that? He knows Terrence Crawford is a threat. Anybody watching knows that he's a threat. So I would never tell you, I, I think Spence can beat him, but I also think he can beat Spence, okay? They have the ability to beat each other. He knows Terrence Crawford is a threat. He said it openly. There's nothing else to fucking debate. There's nothing to, to argue. He said it. And I'm telling you, he doesn't want that fight right now. I told you, if they fight, it's going to be the last fight because he wants to finally unify. That that that's he doesn't want that fight right now. He wants to do all he can do. He wants to be the A side. He is the A side. I don't care that Terence Crawford is the more technical boxer. That doesn't matter. He's the. We're talking about who. Terence Crawford is not a draw. It's just as simple as that. Okay. And here's where the Roy Jones hypocrisy comes in. Okay. Roy Jones said, okay, he can't give uh, uh, Errol Spence, okay, pound for pound. On the pound for pound list of a top 10 with fighters in different weight classes combined or pound for pound as far as um, the welterweights, he's one of the top guys, but I can't give him the top spot. He ain't fought nobody yet. He said Mikey Garcia didn't count. And Kel Brook didn't count. He said Mikey Garcia wasn't a natural heavyweight. I mean, heavyweight. Wasn't a natural welterweight. He said that um, Kel Brook was damaged goods by the time he fought Errol Spence. Remember that, okay? He was damaged goods because he got his eye socket broken, right? And all that. Okay. Orbital bone or whatever. When he fought um, against... Errol Spence. Most people had Kell Brook ahead on points. I don't know if the judges did, but I know most people. And I don't know if it was just bias or whatever. I remember it being a good fight, and they were both landing their shots and doing their thing. And then Errol Spence broke his other eye socket. Okay? So you're saying that the guy came in there already damaged goods. That's That was Roy Jones' words, okay? 
After that fight, Kell Brook disappeared. He fought three mediocre guys, and I wasn't impressed with what I saw. And I'm like, man, when you have lackluster performances, sometimes, you know, great fighters can turn things around. All of a sudden, it didn't look so good. Look at, look at what Nito Donaire just did. Look at what he just did, you know, the other, other, the other week. So, you know, and then all of a sudden, just when you think like this guy's, you know, but I just wasn't impressed. And I'm like, I don't know. And then we talk about him fighting Terrence Crawford, not just an, an ordinary boxer. We talk about Terrence Crawford. So I'm like, you know, I, I don't see him beating. Even at his best, I still would give Terrence Crawford the edge over Kilbrook. Okay. Kilbrook was a solid fighter. But we saw him fight three mediocre guys. We saw him compete with Kell Brook, I mean with um Terrence Crawford and we saw what happened to Kell Brook, man. Okay, we saw what happened to him. Now Roy Jones can't give Errol Spence full credit for beating him because he was damaged goods. Right? Came in there and already had his eye socket broken. Okay, well, he was healed. Isn't he didn't re break the same side, he broke the other one, okay? So I don't understand how he, the fact that he even said that, I'm like, Roy, injuries happen, okay? Billy Joe Saunders just got injured. So if he comes back and he's healed from his injury, and then all of a sudden somebody damaged his other eye, are you going to say, oh, he was already damaged goods because of, no, no. We're talking about something happens and then all of a sudden now you can't take really any, any real damage to that side because it, it, it was already damaged to the point it's never going to be the same again. Or something like that. Okay, yeah, somebody did that for you, okay? But he damaged the other side. It had nothing to do with, 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 with the original injury. But that was Roy Jones' assessment, right? So he was damaged goods. Now we see him against Terrence Crawford. So basically, we see completely that, yeah, he can't compete anymore with the elite guys. We see that. It, it doesn't matter who was in there. If it was Keith Thurman... If it would have been Sean Porter, who he he would have got beat, and he beat Sean Porter when when they were younger in their primes. But that night, no, that that not just that night. This version of Kell Brook, he, he's not the same fighter. He, he he's not the same. He's done. You saw the punch that hurt him. It was a fucking jab, a jab. Okay. Well, Roy Jones to promote his own fighter, Chris Eubanks Jr. He says. You know, he want, Chris Eubanks Jr. says he want the elite guys, man. He don't want any, any, remember that. He said, I don't want any soft touches, any easy fights. I want straight to the elite guys. And what did Roy Jones say? He think Carol Brook will be the perfect fight because that's a big fight for boxing. And, you know, it's just a big fight. The UK fans would love it. No, Roy. No, they wouldn't. First off, that's not, you don't see the hypocrisy already? Errol Spence fought Kell Brook some years ago, and you called him damaged goods. So you can't give him pound for pound. This is not about giving um, Chris Eubanks Jr. pound for pound, but the fact that you even would say that Kell Brook is a worthy opponent, that he is an elite fighter, he's a crafty veteran, he's a skillful, great fighter. No, he used to be. He used to be. He's not now. And not only that, this guy got to come up from 147 to fight at 160 or 168 or whatever the fuck Chris Eubanks Jr. fight at. But he's got to come up two, three weight divisions. And that's fair. This is an elite. You're actually going to put this little guy in here with this big dude, this big, young, strong dude, after you called him damaged goods. So how does this solidify anything positive? What does this do for Chris Eubanks Jr. other than make the people hate him more than they already hate him for beating up on a guy that shouldn't have been in the ring with him? Now, you can't blame him. It'd be, it would be Kell Brook's fault if he took the fight, which I think would be stupid on his behalf because this guy will really wind up just being physically too strong to where he will really hurt this. He might, Chris, listen, Chris Eubanks Jr., just his youth and his power alone. He's not a trash fighter, okay? He's just not as, he's not where people want him to be. And 
a lot of time he talk more, he talk like he's better than what he is, and I, I get it, okay, but he has enough to destroy Killbrook. Let's let's be real. So that's hypocrisy right there. Not to mention, you shot him down for fighting Mikey Garcia, saying that that didn't prove anything. Okay, Roy Jones went through the same thing when he fought Benny Pazienza. And Roy Jones never said, well, that's true. I'm a much bigger guy. It was, it's not really a fight I should have took. You can't really judge much. No, no. You talked about how great Benny Pazienza was. Benny Pazienza wanted it. It's no different. I fight guys bigger than me. Right? So Roy Jones in defense of himself. So why is people acting like Errol Spence is supposed to sit there and, well, if Roy said it, then it must be true. No. No. You got criticized, um, criticized for fighting Benny Pazienza. And people said you couldn't gauge nothing from that. But you still defended yourself. And I've never heard you to this day say anything different. Never said that, nah, yeah, you can't really gauge much about that Vinny Pazienza fight. He's a much smaller guy. and It wasn't fair. Not to mention, Vinny Pazienza had a broken neck from a car accident. And was said to never walk again. Okay? You fought him after all that shit. So, you understand what I'm saying? So when you look at your victories and you bring up the Vinny Pazienza win, you know how many people will look at you and say, Roy, nah, that fight was, nah, bullshit, man. That dude was, look, Roy Jones is that dude, whoever Roy fought, I always will rock with Roy to win. But again, I'm not going to sit up here and make excuses up. At the end of the day, bro, you didn't want to fight Thomas Hearns. Because Hearns was over the hill and washed up. I respected Roy for that. Like, yeah, what does he have to gain for fighting Thomas Hearns now? Same thing with Evander, but it might have ended up being different at that point. Because Evander was was pulling off some shit, man. Like, he went through his losses, losses, and then obviously started turning things around. Now, Roy probably still would have beat him, okay, at that stage. But the point is, you you didn't take those fights because you had nothing to gain from it. The Vinny Pazienza fight... You understand what I'm saying? People can view it the same way. Now, you said when you went up, you only went up to fight Mike Tyson because you want you beat Ruiz, but you wanted only Mike, and then that fight wasn't available, right? <coughs> so, fine. But at the same time, right, Vinny Pazienza came up, and Vinny Pazienza asked for that ass whooping. Let me, let, me, let me just make that clear. Vinny asked for that ass whooping. Roy didn't call him out. He called Roy out. But the point is... You still fought a guy that was much smaller than you that came up to your world and clearly just wasn't big enough or strong. Even, even though physically he's short and stocky and the, didn't matter. Didn't matter. He asked for that ass whooping. But what I'm saying is, Roy is in the, it's just, I mean, you know, how, how is it that you can even bring up the Vinny Pazienza fight as a, as a, as, as a, uh, um, a good win in your career and then take that victory away from Errol Spence over Mikey Garcia? You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, let's not forget, Mikey was the only one that stepped up. And yes, at that point, Errol Spence was calling out Keith Thurman, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, and none of them wanted to fight him. See how these guys, what they do? When they see you on fire, they try to stay away from you. They don't want to get burned. When they think they see a weakness, that's when all of a sudden, oh, yeah, yeah, I fight Errol Spence. Same thing with Anthony Joshua. When he, when he fought against Klitschko, they didn't look at it like, yo, Klitschko has more experience than Joshua. But Joshua showed grit. He punched himself out. He got exhausted. That punch that sent him down, it, it was mostly because of his exhaustion. If, if it would have been like if AJ went down, he got up, and after he, well, he dropped Klitschko first, remember? But the point is, every regardless, he got up. It was a great fight. Instead of people just enjoying a great fight, everybody wanted, oh, see, he was exposed. And everybody think that they can beat AJ now. Anthony Joshua got in there with Andy Ruiz. We saw what happened. But we also saw what happened in the rematch. What did they do? They shot Anthony Joshua down. Yet, we've seen Tyson Fury brutalize Deontay Wilder, but you still got people talking about the right hand, the right hand, the right hand. So, it is what it is, man. But that's where the hypocrisy came in, okay? You can't sit here and say, I can't give this guy credit for beating this guy on the pound-for-pound list because that guy is not a natural welter or welterweight. Benny Pazienza wasn't a natural middleweight, but you still fought him. 
And you and, and, and bottom line, you got I remember the criticism that Roy Jones got. In fact, before I even end that, Roy Jones got criticized for never fighting Nigel Ben. For never fighting Chris Eubanks. For never fighting what's the other um uh forget the other guy names, um Steve Collins. For never fighting, it was certain guys that he didn't fight. That people that people pretty much said Roy ducked. I'm not saying Roy ducked him, but I remember Roy didn't want to fight one guy because he felt like if he go in his country and fight, they're going to rob him of the of, of the victory. So you still had a reason to not fight a guy, right? Even though it wasn't because you were scared. The guy didn't want to come over here and fight. You the champ. Why you got to trap? And I agree with that. Why, why does he have to fight on that guy's terms, right? You got something he want. He should be coming to get it from you. I agree with that. But you got criticized for it. And to this very day, if people ask, why did the fight with Nigel Ben never happen? Why did the fight with Steve Collins and Chris Eubanks never happen? Why didn't you and Joe Kawasaki fight back then? If that could those questions come up, Roy Jones is going to have a defense for himself. So, again, why is everybody acting like Errol Spence is supposed to just crumble because Roy Jones is saying something? You know, somebody made a video. I didn't even watch the video, but I see the title said something about uh, Errol Spence and his team can't respond. They're not. They're in no position to respond to Roy Jones. That's bullshit, bro. There's no man, woman, no nothing on earth, nobody that you should bow down to, or you have to show so much respect to them that they can say what they want about you, but you can't respond. I don't believe in that bullshit at all. That's complete trash. If you, I, I, I treat you how you treat me. Okay, Roy Jones is a guy that there's been many times people were asking questions. He said, no comment. Be honest and say what's on your mind. But that's some biased shit because you fought a guy, like I said, that wasn't you. That wasn't a natural on 160 pounder. You still fought him. The same. But my point about bringing up Hearns and bringing up um, bringing up um, Holyfield was because. You could have took the same energy with them and said with with, Pac, with Pazienza and said, "Look, man, Vinny Pazienza isn't isn't is a lose lose for me. I beat him. They're gonna say he's too small. He's not naturally my weight. Okay. But bottom line, he's not gonna beat me. But I'm not gonna get no credit for that. What I want the little guy for? You could have said the same thing, but you didn't. You took the fight. Okay. I don't know if it was a situation where it was the best situation on the table for you." You know, people say, why you didn't fight Tarvin when you're always younger? You see, I remember the criticisms of Sugar Ray Leonard, Roy Jones, so many fighters. But as time goes on, people try to immortalize these fighters and make you think that they had perfect careers. They did things so, so much different from now. The business models are different. Before Roy J um, Floyd Mayweather fought McGregor, remember, Roy Jones was trying to fight Anderson Silva. Not in a, not in a, in an MMA fight, in a boxing match. Nobody criticized Roy for that. The reason that didn't, that wouldn't have been a big thing. Maybe when Roy Jones was on top, yeah, maybe. Sometimes things about timing, everything that worked now doesn't mean it would have worked then, you know, or vice versa. But Roy Jones at that point was already on the downside. He was no longer RJ. He wasn't that Roy Jones. He wasn't that Michael Jordan, you know, what what Michael Jordan was the basketball, what Roy what he, he was that he wasn't that anymore. And it looked like desperation to other people. With 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 Floyd understand, right? It was for the payday. It was for the event, the spectacle. Look at how much money he made from that. Now, again, who in the fuck can Manny Pacquiao fight right now in boxing? And make $35 million. Who? He's not going to make $35 million fighting Errol Spence. He's not going to make that fight in Terrence Crawford. He's not going to make that fight in Ugas. He's not going to make that in a rematch with Keith Thurman. He's not going to make that fight in Danny Garcia. Okay. Pacquiao was open to trying to fight McGregor. See, what people need to understand. You know how you change... You know how, like, when you were, when you were a teenager, you like, you know, I forgot, I'll kill you, right? And then you mature, and you're like, hey, just, you know I'll kill you, right? You, 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 you change. You, you, when you're younger, 
everything you do is strength and power. And you, you then you start to realize, like, nah, my motherfucking wrist starting to hurt. Okay, you know what? Let me do this smarter. So I'm not fucking my wrist up. So I'm not, you know, doing things and then, you know, um, that's unnecessary. Because your youth, you use your brain less. You, 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 everything is all about the physicality. But then you start to wise and realize, mm, okay, cool. Right? Remember Michael Jordan came back and said, nah, I'm playing this game more mental than physical. You know? Because why? He has to conserve his energy a little better. He has to be on the floor for long periods of time. So I got to depend on my teammates a little more than I used to. And, you know, MJ still... I'm talking about the Washington Wizards, um, MJ. Okay, but I'm just saying, you see things. Remember when Muhammad Ali fought Ken Norton in the rematch, the second fight? Muhammad Ali, when he was being interviewed, remember then they they was you know asked him about the fight and he told him he looked good and everything. But what did Ali say? Remember that he said, I'm, you know, I feel good, but I feel a little more tired than usual because of my age. Y'all know how old Ali was? Ali was only 31 years old, man. He was only 31 in that rematch with Norton. And he said, because of his age, he feels a little more tired. He's 31. That's young, man. But he said it's because of his age. Remember when Sugar Ray Leonard fought Kevin Howard? Got dropped, got up. Stopped Howard, though. And remember at the end of the, remember the, the, the press conference? Remember, remember the post conference? What did he say? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to retire. I'm going to give it up. It's, it's just not there. It's, you know, it's, um, it's just not there. And yes, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm retiring for good this time. You know how old Sugar Inland was? He's 27 years old. He was a week away from his 28th birthday. He's 27. He said it wasn't there anymore. Okay. Remember when Floyd Mayweather went away for two years? Two years came back and fought Marquez and dominated. You know what everybody said? Oh man, he's too small. He was too small for Floyd. Well, his wasn't saying that before the fight. It's always before the fight. This guy's gonna be Floyd's toughest opponent. This guy's gonna do this and that. Floyd's gonna have to make adjustments. Floyd's got to do right. And then after it's always this excuse as to why Floyd won. Marquez was too small for him, but Manny Pacquiao wasn't. I'm just saying. Come on, y'all. You know how old Floyd was when he beat Canelo Alvarez, man? He was 36. Huh? Told y'all that in the last video. He's 36. Canelo was 23. He wasn't even in his prime anymore. And he's still embarrassed of Canelo. And you know what pisses people off? Is because no matter what they try to say about Canelo or Pacquiao or De La Hoya or, or Shane or any of these other guys, Jesse James, Leha, Gennaro Hernandez, no matter who it is, no matter what they try to say or try to immortalize them later, what they all going to have in common, Diego Corrales, all of them, is Floyd beat all of them. And the fact that they're trying to put somebody, it's amazing that they try to put a person that beat you, they try to find a way to make you better than them. And this is just stupidity. Now, And, and like I said, I'm just being real about what I see, man. I'm not going to say any, any sugar code. Anything I said about Roy, think about it. Like anybody. Think about what I'm saying. These are facts. This is not no fucking... This is not just opinions. These are facts. You know, Vinny Pazienza, pause. Okay, and look. Vinny Pazienza started out as a lightweight. Think about this. People talk about... You know, Pacquiao starting out at 118 or whatever, right? Floyd starting out at lightweight. They both were small guys and went up. You compare that jump from a guy coming from 130, 135, all the way up to 160, 168. You see the point, what I'm saying? So if Roy Jones is going to say what he's saying about Errol Spence, he got to understand the same criticism that he faced. He never turned around and said, you guys are right. Yeah, that, that fight with Vinny, you can't, you know. He never said that. So, again, you know, you don't bow down to anybody, man. I'm not going to tell anybody they should bow. And, and, and you can't respond to somebody. You know, yes, you can. 
And here's this thing, right? As far as us looking at age, okay, this is one of the reasons why a lot of people, they only want to try to compare people in their primes of their favorite fighters because then it's like, you're still only giving your opinion. It's not a fact. But in doing that, in their minds, because of who they are, like if you're saying Sugar Ray, you're saying Duran, you're saying Hagler, Hearns, Ray Robinson, you know, uh, uh, um, um, you know, Ezra Charles, you know, there's a lot of fighters that, uh, uh, um, um, Kid Gavilan, you know, Carmine Vasilio, people that have had made their mark and they'll try to, oh, from this year to that year, nobody could beat this guy. Anybody can say that. So if you can say that about Ray Leonard, if you can say that about Mike Tyson, Ali, you know, Ray Robinson, why can't somebody say the same thing about Floyd? Why can't Floyd say the same thing about him? You know, right. The point is, though, see, what they all have in common is when you stretch their careers out through their whole career, well, most of them were washed up early. You can't even compare them to Floyd at that point. So aside from their primes and then going on, Sugar Ray Leonard himself said Floyd could compete in any era. See, here's the thing. Y'all say Floyd, like Ray Leonard would kill Floyd. Ray, Ray Leonard himself, of course, Ray Leonard thinks he can be anybody. And you should, right? But Ray Leonard, you ask him the question about him beating Floyd. You know, look at his face when he's answering that question. He's, Floyd is, he's, Floyd is different. Floyd is an exceptional boxer, he, right? Ray Leonard says, that his brother, his own brother said he don't think he could have beat Floyd. He just don't think he would be able to catch Floyd, man. Floyd is just too too, too crafty, too smart, too sharp. And his counterpunching ability, everything. And you think that it would have been a chess match that Ray couldn't beat him that way. He'd have to try to rough Floyd up. But the thing with Floyd, Floyd could take a punch. And on top of that, Floyd is hard to hit. So even though you're trying to look at Manny Pacquiao's speed, that shit was nullified, man. Everything he was throwing at Floyd, he would jump in and try to, you know, jump in with that right to the body and then, then drop you know, a little slap. And Floyd was dipping all of that shit. He was doing the same repetitive shit. Everything that you used to see Pacquiao doing, he couldn't do it. And it wasn't because of no goddamn shoulder. You know, and this is what I'm saying. So, was what was it? Floyd, was, what was Pacquiao was too old? That was the excuse, right? Or he just wasn't ready. What was it? Because Pacquiao was one of the easier fights that he had, too. No different from Canelo. I mean, he whooped Canelo's ass a little worse, but, I mean, he, he both bottom line, was an easy fight. He didn't have to do much. Beat him with a damn jab right hand all night long. He didn't have to do much. But the point what I'm getting at, y'all, okay, when you're trying to give an advantage to somebody by saying they would have beat a person because of this and because of that, it doesn't change the facts, but understand something. Manny Pacquiao, as, as great as he is, okay? He's still fighting right now at 41, 42, whatever it is. Manny Pacquiao, all right, will always have that loss on his record. It doesn't mean he's not a great fighter. But you guys sound stupid trying to shoot a fighter down that beat these guys, but you find a way to try to keep pushing these guys all the, up on the pedestal. It doesn't mean nothing. I don't give a fuck. If he was to beat Errol Spence, if he beat Terrence Crawford, it doesn't mean he's better than Floyd. It, you know what it means? It means you could beat all of them motherfuckers, but you couldn't beat Floyd. That's all that means. I don't give a shit how many people you beat. It doesn't matter. Everybody that said a guy was going to beat Floyd and why they, why, why they were going to beat Floyd when they lost excuses it's no different for any other fighter that stands out right now everybody get their criticism you do the same thing with aj they keep waiting for aj to lose they keep trying to oh this person oh deontay's power oh tyson fury is such a slick boxer but you know what's funny is none of them want to fight aj they show you they don't want to fight aj they're the ones aj is always the one humble saying i'm still learning they better try to fight me now because the thing is, the, the, the more I learn, the more dangerous it's going to be for them, the harder it's going to be for right? But they're the ones that's not ready to jump in the ring. Now, 
when Ray Leonard got beat by Terry Norris, right? He was he was he was thirty four. He was twenty seven when he fought Howard. He retired. Remember what he did? He retired for another two years. He came back when he fought Hagley. He was thirty. He didn't even have a tune up. Got knocked out by a sparring partner, and he changed his, his game up because he wanted to go in and brawl with Hagler. What made him think he could beat Hagler? What did he see? He, he beat him. So it shows you he still has. He still was great. Wasn't the same. But at 27, what happened? What changed from 27 to 30? What changed? Right? It was obviously something. He trained hard. He did something different, right? Okay. Look, y'all, I remember watching Ray Leonard get booed out the building because he couldn't knock Duran out in the third fight. It was, a, it was a garbage fight. It was just a garbage fight, man. And what I learned about athletes, okay, entertainers, period, that, that people like and people want to try to keep them in the spotlight, they will try to immortalize them. They try to give them more accolades and, and, and then and even when it's deserved, but they try to make them like they're not human. They try to push them to be something more than what they are. And then you got other fighters who are simply telling you, look, when Floyd walked away, I'm not talking about when he got incarcerated. I'm not talking about just because his body, let his body heal. Let, this is what you do, man. But he came back and never had a tune-up. He came back and went straight to a top guy. And he beat them and made it look easy. So what I'm saying is when you sit here, when you sit here and make up excuses about a guy because you don't like him, it doesn't change anything. I'm going to stop this video here. I'm going to do a part three. I will catch y'all on the next video.